Hey guys, Tatner up here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Belgorod. I'm face pointing on the Lifogot Kirov with Soviets, who's gone for NKVD straight away, as we often see from him. Teaming up with him is Dark Region, with Soviets also, who has NKVD defensive and mechanized supports. Supports, uh, anyway. On the right hand side, we've got Unbalanced, who has Overwatch. Grand Offensive and Special Operations is OKW, and also with OKW is Nima, who's immediately gone for Elite Armored. In terms of rankings, Allies obviously a ranged team, uh, currently ranked 20, Axis random team, unbalanced 30, and Nima 6. Tier 1 start here from Kirov, which I think makes sense. You're up against double OKW. One of the double Soviets should go for uh, Tier 1. And I could even bully that uh, early 2 2 1, looks like Nina's planning. Good engagement there, though, to start from Nima. Sandbags planted, but not really relevant. Oh, looks like he's got a couple conscript models stuck. Might be able to double vault over this and uh, be okay here. I'll just lose the models that are stuck in the uh, sandbags. It's also an option. Might not have uh, had the vault option. Sometimes can be a bit finicky in those situations. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. Okay, coming in here with the M3. Doing some good damage to unbalance. He goes for a Rakitten immediately. Advance this, and he's only got two squads on top of the Sturmpire, so a bit of a weak start. Popping in and out of cover. Probably needs to just get these penals in the light cover over here. They keep fighting out in the open for Kirov. It's not good. After losing those engagements. Bit of a cutoff play here from the Axis. And then a rotation for the flank. Decide to back away. Get some repairs in. Maybe. Sensing that a Rakitin is coming. Run down here for a few more points. So far, the cover usage and target selection of Kirov may be a little bit underwhelming. Oh boy. Fox screen is in major trouble here. He's chasing, he's one in that white. And he gets it too. Nice follow through from Dark Region. See the grenade came out down the bottom here. with the flamethrower now. It took quite a long time for this to come online though for Kirov. Already at the stage where Faust are online. No, they're not. He hasn't gone mechanized yet. Oh, he's gone for healing first. Okay. Well, I would assume Faust would be online at this stage. I was able to fight back a little bit after that squad might. 2-2-1 two, two, though. Gonna do a lot of damage to all these low health conscripts. Doing a pretty good job staying evasive around shot blockers though. I'm just charging into it head on with a big blob. Trying to overwhelm with small arms damage. Move a bit slower to get the tip going. Okay, engagement here for the penals. Again, though, he's kind of got a whole squad out in the open. Don't have to fight here as well. Could, like, back up to over here. 
fight from this position have a more relevant amount of cover. Sandbags coming up for Nima on that same spot. Bunch of mines coming in for Kirov out the back. I feel like the N3A1 hasn't really been used to its fullest potential here. SCG's popping out, it's going to level the playing field a lot against these penals. So far the Raketan, no veterancy at all though, hasn't landed a single shot, so I suppose that's one good impact of... It hasn't been farming vet off this M301. Raketan now for Nima. Still quite early on for, you know, to be going for a Raketan, but maybe feels like he needs it against... Looks like a PTRS squad inside the M3A1 could cause us some major trouble. So maybe probably a bit too early for the quad, especially considering what we've seen from the Allies so far. We've seen Molotovs now from Dark Region's conscripts, so it would delay any light vehicles. And typically Dark Region, as we've experienced, not, not a common uh, fast tier 3 kind of player. Uh, you know, with the fuel decaps, the cutoffs. Kirov going for an M3A1. I wouldn't expect like a fast quad from either of these players in this particular match. So maybe could have delayed that. Raketan and uh, did end up doing that. Switch over to a machine gun. Here comes the PTRS though. This is the worry. Just going to get the 18 8 off. The M3 backed away at a bad timing. He's coming in here hot. Oh, but still gets a good volley off. The PTRSs. Oh, boy. the switch targets over to the 221. He's trying to smoke in there. This is trouble. He needs to jump out with the penals, use some attack round, I think. He's going. Oh, the small arms knocks it out anyway. Try to speed boost away, but it gets fousted. Either way, that's really good for the allies unbalanced. Trying to hold his ground. Maybe he thought he was just out of snare range. It's not less. Oh, just have a your wake satchel there and uh, it's dodged by unbalance quite easily. Got some Jaeger lights coming to the mix now for unbalance. Make it tough for the penals. Getting up nicely. On paper, you know, the matchup penals versus. Yeglice is not that bad, but in practice it always feels so bad as the Soviet player. Kirov sure went for a fourth penal, by the way, so... Struggling. Struggling to keep up with the manpower demands. Side here. Oh boy, what? Huh? Was that to his own grenade? What? At least that was like. No, it couldn't be. So that was one of these scorched earth traps, but I don't think so. <laughs> what was that? What killed his fog screen there over here? Was it his own incendiary grenade? None of the conscripts' mortals are on cooldown at the moment. That was a very, very strange loss. Can't explain it. Needs to rebuild on that for Nima. Coming up now for Kirov. 
So I think it was going to be cheaper to reinforce going forwards. Coming in from the side with the penals looking for some angles. Second Rakitin in the build for unbalanced and looks like he's going to try to put up his Shreya and his headquarters shortly. Here it comes. in here looking for a bit of damage no AT gun or anything for Darker he's got a lot of manpower floating so he's got his tier 4 up as well but it seems like he's going straight for a tank probably needed some kind of team weapon use this in the meantime though suppression bit of mine action this is a couple of retreats there and looking pretty good for Nima holding strong here he's also picking up a second Rakitin Is this in the build now for Dark Region, but a little bit late. MG comes in. Yeah, he lights here as well. He's going to try crawl behind cover. Oh, there's got a sniper for Kirov. Yeah, he lights are chasing it down. Oh, he goes for the cheeky shot. And it pays off too. I don't know. I don't know if a two multi Jaeger light could get a kill in that situation. I don't know if you need two shots or three shots to uh, get the sniper in crit range. Not making the best use of cover. Perhaps a bit slow to switch the focus fire across to the stern pose as well. He's going to try and bait the stern pose into some mines here though, and it seems like I'm balanced. Not going to, doesn't want to chase past this area, which is also a pretty common mine spot. So bringing the Shrek, he's got the sweepers already actually. Could whip them out. Do some detecting here and uh, probably take care of a few of them. This barrage onto the machine gun. Quick pack up though from Nima. All kills already for the sniper. Not a good idea to stay in here with you yeah, with the sniper there. It's out. It's a little bit exposed, but has some conscript back up. A bit of a late retreat here from the stern pie. Sniper picks the shot. Oh, I survive though. Bit of a close call. Oh! I spoke too soon. I didn't even notice there was another conscript all the way up here. And that's what gets the wipe. Wow. That's, that's a big loss for Nima. Damage engine on the 223 as well, it doesn't have any squad to repair it, so. A sticky situation. Hasn't got the pen's authorization yet either. And here is the first T34 for Kirov. Good angle for the rocket, no, doesn't quite get the shot in and go for an extra attack round. Are a couple mines around for the Axis as well. Be careful though. Could quite easily get overrun here, the Axis, with these double 234s roaming about. Especially if they go for a 2 on 1. Oh boy, that's a bit of a late retreat, and the penal pays the price. Is it 9 or 10 kills for the sniper? It's done very well so far, but maybe he's too busy trying to micro that instead of focusing on the penals. Number of kittens though, getting a great combo off. Forcing that back for repairs. 
Still has his commander open, Dark Region. I'm guessing it's probably going to be mechanized support at this stage. Probably don't need two anti-tank overwatch commanders. And the ISU typically quite strong on this map as well. Have a read on the OKW commanders at this stage as well. We've got Jaeger Lights, got the 223, so no, you're not up against any Yank Tiger. Commanders. Commander. So a bit safer to go for the ISU as well. Appears again. I wonder if he would consider at this stage just trying to put it into uh, fuel cash mode or boosting up the resources. Because I, mean, I suppose it's a pretty good vision tool as well. Wow. Greedy stuff from Dark Region driving around with that low health T34 and he pays the price to cover a kit and snipe him off. Ouch. Going off from the sniper, I think. Over here. Get three on that two, two, three, though. Twenty five kills, very impressive. Definitely aided by uh, no light vehicles from the Allies to counter it. Except free rain and you know, Dark Region being very late getting the Zis as well. And no, he uh, defies my expectation, goes for defensive. He's going to build now for Nima. It's been quite slow, the Allies though, hitting their first mediums around 18 minutes. I felt like their fuel control has been pretty strong. But maybe I was uh, incorrect. I suppose Unbalanced did lose his flak with a very little show for it. Do some attack ground action here with the Rakitin. Goes off the sandbags here, I think it is. Oh, Jaeger lights! Ooh. Close call on that sniper. Might have missed this G43 shot, not entirely sure. They're putting it onto our um, Unicash mode. He's got more resources for himself there. You know, been using his munitions. Does have a bit floating though. Could maybe get some STGs on one or two of these fog screen gears. To the north, going after the machine gun gets a pretty good hit as well. It's going to get away though. Very close call. Bit of a two-on-one brewing right now against Nima. Has to play defensively. Pop the heat rounds on his P4. Hands are getting a couple shots in. Kirov getting away. Sagiri grenade in. Pretty solid damage. Now the Yeagites can maybe clean up those uh, models that got dropped in health. Good hit from the P4 as well. Six kills now. Going for the commander upgrade on that as well. anti-infantry which is interesting I feel like that's maybe the area where he was lacking at this stage got anti-tank pretty well handled with a Shrek 2 red kittens but maybe if he's you know boosting up his munitions like this maybe he just wants to be able to spam out that artillery ok repairs coming in on the T-34. Got 
heat shells again, but maybe zoned by the Zis. Didn't really get to use them against the tank. Oh! The cheeky! That's that's like the tightrope special. I'll call it the tightrope special because I'm always shooting at snipers with my tank destroyer. <laughs> and on this occasion, it comes good for unbalance. Nicely done. Not sure what revealed the sniper exactly there, but he gets the kill. And it's possible because tank destroyers, they still do full damage against infantry, whereas like anti-tank guns only do quarter. Oh! Oh! Whoa, that was a nasty shot. They were a little bit low, but not... They were just so clumped up. Wow. What can you say about that? It's one of those swipes. Don't do much about that. More T-34s for Kirov. He's got quite a lot of manpower floating as well. Maybe could do with a second combat engineer. Some more repairs, get some sweeping going down if you're going to be doing some big dives with the anti tank overwatch. He pays to get a sweeper or two. T34 got blasted a bit, had to back away. Got the plane tree now for unbalanced as well. Random team on the exercise though, I have to remember that. Shusha. Supply sector under attack. Just after the machine gun. And so he's gotta be careful. We're going for a chase down, looking for the squad white. Oh boy, Yak Penza hits the mine. We're kitting though. Oh, gets two shots. Second one landing, absolute max range. Knocks the T 34 out, but here comes the tank Overwatch squads coming in, trying to zone. The TRS is looking for a bit of extra damage as well. Boy, oh, so far away from the edge though. Brings in the planes. Oh, is that the plane edge that I'm seeing? Goes down nonetheless. It's a Faust off. Kind of zones the T-34 a little bit, but... Didn't really accomplish anything. Oh, is that abandoned though? Didn't get completely blown up. Alright, there's hope for unbalance yet. There's a trick. Squad coming up. Oh. Machine gun completely destroyed there by Dark Region. Got the quad in the build now for Kirov. That makes sense. Does want to allow a sick one through. Oh boy. Mortar gets decrewed up here. And balanced on the steel. Try to get out of here with it. Doesn't have any anti tank on the escape route, but T-34 struggling. Doesn't get it. Oh, okay, got that one instead. Goes the P4 though, the kitten as well. Drops his end. Uh, Pence Commander Artillery, I think. Not too much though. And the Yag Panzer repairs back up to full strength. Bandit saving the day for unbalanced. And the Flak Bay saving the Rakesson. Another Katusha. Going after the squads up the top. This one for Dark Region. Not secure mode. 
nice idea. He must still know SCGs on any of his uh, Fox Comedians. That's unusual. I don't think, like, spamming this artillery is that good that you need to be spinning munitions on that instead of upgrades that could help you compete against the uh, conscripts. Before getting some big hits here, though, he was assisted by the extra vision on the uh, hands of Hawkins and long range shots in. And there's the heavy mortar now on the Axis side, rebuild on the Jaeger lights from unbalanced as well. It's quite a lot of fuel. Could have built a tank, but chose another Jaeger light. Could be pretty good to get a few more mines down as well for unbalance. You know you're up against anti tank overwatch now and to shut down some of those aggressive moves. From the Soviets. Don't know about the anti air yet though, so he's probably saving for another loiter. Chushes haven't been that good. Only five kills for Kirovs. Two for Dark Regions. P4 is blitzing. Oh, that T34 is in major trouble. And he goes down. What a move from Nima. He challenged there. Just, you know, didn't need the extra damage, but the extra penetration. Making sure he uh, can get the kill. It's the decoy on the Zis. The allies are in a bit of trouble here. Under a lot of pressure. Another T-34 is coming out. Kirov gets back on his Zis. T-34 tries to go for a bit of a crush, but doesn't really work. Forces the retreat anyway. Oh, Yagpans are getting right the way up here. T-34 getting low. I think it would survive one more shot anyway, because it took a Shrek hit. Penal got wiped here too. And I bounced. I was too focused. I didn't really read the trash talk at the start of the game, but maybe that makes sense to you guys. Pretty much bang even on victory points, but army size makes us way ahead right now. 15-20. Just a lot of D crews though, not the really kill on the weapons to follow that up. Having a look at the KD Kirov, pretty uh, good. Oh, he had that sniper earlier, of course. Dark region, not too bad for his Soviet play. I thought the uh, 223 would have bled more. Allies having a bad run with these Kachushas for sure, though. The scatter not lining up for them. They are doing quite a lot of these barrages from far away, though, so. Might pay to get a bit closer. Just about there for another loiter. The ISG actually, I didn't even notice that from Nima. It's on the dodge. Capture. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, did he actually throw that CD grenade? He did. Didn't really need to. Okay, another Panzer IV from Nima. He's also getting the final tech truck. Maybe just wants the repairs. So we have the, uh, you know, King Tiger as the option. To be very strong with Commander, but also very susceptible to anti-tank overwatch shenanigans. Being so slow, such a high value target. Might not be the right call in this game. But the allies are locked and loaded with that overwatch. Okay, planes coming in. Nexus making a bit of a push here. D 
Safety crews. Oh, he never upgraded this to the quad. Dobra Kitten's pushing in, care of not paying attention. Oh, he's just surviving. No, spoke too soon. The P4 blitzes him and polishes him off. And now, major trouble for the Allies. On Katusha down, out the back. Oh, he, okay. Dark region went for the quad. Care off, I didn't notice that. We find some trouble down the bottom here. And see a gold watch coming in, and the P4 goes down to it. Lining up with the Zis. Yagpans are chasing all the way here. Just for a cheeky Katusha on the Jaegers. I think it's one of them. It's back and through the anti tank Overwatch again. The concussive grenade, the T-34. It's the decor on the machine gun. And has to back away here. He's trying to get the kill on the decrew machine gun though, but... Now he's left himself vulnerable. T-34 bounced. I don't know, really die to one shot? No, it doesn't. Don't get to find out. I think, yeah, he probably would have. So it was a good start to that push for the Axis, but... The Allies did manage to rebound with one of those anti-tank overwatch, you know, getting the return kill on that high VIP Panzer IV. As the dust settles. Axis is still with the lead. Pretty comfortable. We were on Katusha. And Anima. Undeterred. Instead of building another unit after those losses, still going to put down the mechanized truck. Does that signal King Tiger at this stage? It might do. here. Oops, a bit of blocking. Doesn't allow the escape. And, you know, some reinforcement could go a long way in this game. It's a bit of a shame to lose it. Even a second quad could be okay. Shoot down the planes even faster. Here, combat engineers dead. There's a mine. He does have the sweepers, but he keeps them uh, hidden. Could cost him one of these days. Next have pulled about a hundred VP lead here. Combat engineers are standing by. But the allies are fighting well on the VPs, in spite of their uh, small armies. There's the artillery down. T 34 getting shrieked. It's a master trick to shit coming in as well. A cheeky shot as it backs off. Hands are chasing away the T 34 down the bottom. Now, coming up here to cap the uh, Muni point, gets a smear off on the 223. Putting a siege down on the mechanized. Might want to cancel the repair pioneers on them because you're not going to get a refund for those if this goes down. Too late. The light's coming in from the side. T guns are still working. Got the Stuka in the build for Nima, but. Maybe if he built that before the repairs, he could have. Uh, Hit it. Oh, smoke. Tech rounds though, washing it off. So it's going to be 
Need another Panzer IV from Nima after that. A little push there though from Dark Regent. You can definitely feel a lot safer doing that kind of move when you've got anti-tank overwatch up your sleeve. Don't have to worry about your AT guns getting caught out of position quite so much. Did eventually get our STGs on a few of these Fox Treaties, by the way. Oh, nasty hit from the P4 there. Those conscripts were pretty clumps. Okay for it. Got the kittens rolling in now on the T34. I'm up to Vet 2. Somehow the Allies fight back on the VPs. the uh, lost conscript there. Oh, P4 going in for the T34. Goes in for the ram, but dies before that can happen. We are suffering vehicle losses. There's a 4 now in a compromised position, though. It's going to be hard to make it out of here alive. He's... Oh, he's trying to do some creative driving. Smoke, but doesn't quite work. This is an okay trade, but definitely in favor of the Allied team. That uh, Panzer IV had a bit advantage as well. Maybe if he had enough for the artillery, he could have dropped them, forced those AT guns to pack up, and would have made the escape easier, but didn't have any missions this time around. Oh boy. Okay, dodged that a little bit late, but a little late than never. Second Jagdpanzer as well from Unbalanced, that's interesting. I could choose your head too much. Oh, it's another mine. He's trying to creep in with the cautious movement. Didn't he? <laughs> he had the sweepers the whole game. He hasn't put, pulled them out, though. Don't know if Kirov noticed this. Maybe he has. He's coming down here with a few units, but it's too far away to really go for the chase at this stage. Get close, not enough to get a sticky satchel off or anything like. We have a new SU-85 to deploy. Eliza, quite long VPs. We're about to be under the triple cap here. No. Don't stop the decap though, quite. Could use Ura to stop it, I think. Just rolling up on the P4, but it's uh, playing the Rangers nicely. Here comes a Kachusha though, going after the ISG, I think. Oh, just the uh, Rakitans a little bit as well. Speaking of Rakitans, one goes down in the middle. Yeah, creeping barrage from Kirov. I was thinking that scatter on that has been a bit too predictable. Crew might get the kill. He's up there with the Zis. Yep. Good follow through from Kirov. Nice use of the uh, creeping barrage. Now the Axis are on the back foot. Can never count a Soviet team out. You know, Soviets are so resilient in this game. In these late game scenarios, once they get those manpower discounts cooking on their squads, it's so hard to bleed and. So I had to decrew their six-man weapon teams and kill them off. Very efficient. Give you more a bit of trouble, but can retreat on one man, so gets out of there. The enemy has taken our supply sector. Maybe 
the allies feel like the tide has turned. They are ahead now in population. Not, maybe not about getting the uh, walking stupids. Close the gap again. Where's the Cis Ready 5 going? He's trying to chase the Yagpans. It's all the way back here though. The plane's brought in by a bounce. damage on that T-34 is pretty fast though, I've hit three. Oh, Yagpen's about to hit another mine. And this should be the green line for the uh, allies now. Should probably drop an ATC tank Overwatch down here and kill this off. Kirov doesn't have the munitions, so it'll be up to his teammate, Dark Region, who doesn't seem to be uh, doing anything about that. Sure. Oh, and then onto the Rakittens as well. And they're trying to make a bit of a move here, but... Decides you better get out of there. It wasn't looking good. Order's complete. Standing by. Is this still in control of the VPs though after all of that, so... That's good news for them. Oh, Stuka did fire. Only did a tiny bit of damage though. I didn't notice it. Decrewed and killed over here, actually, so that is uh, good news for the Axis. Capping in the middle now. He's going to be feeling the heat. Triple cap. Under 100. Into the bottom. It's a situation where I will probably throw a satchel just to clear off the sandbags. Okay, he's going to come in with the T-34 to do that, and that's also fine. Just, you know, open up the cap faster. Make sure that they're not there for the next engagement. And not necessary. Go again, here comes the walking Stuka. Oh, it's a conscript wipe. Good scatter on the rockets. We have the conscripts immediately from Dark Region. He really likes having four conscripts. He is lacking a little bit in repairs, just with the one combat engineer though, I will say. Maybe that is getting some big hits. The Shredi 5 comes, but doesn't really want to fight the 2 on 1. Good shot from the ISG, gets the squad wipe. Oh boy, and the big move coming in from Nima. Drops the artillery, the AT guns take a little bit of damage from it, they dodge it reasonably well. Force coming in from the other side though. The tank Overwatch dropped by Dark Region quite late in the action. And uh, the Yagpens push and knock out the SU-85. Both AT guns of Dark Region going down over here. Maybe could be polished off. Tanks are getting out. Both Rakitans retreated from Nima. Maybe wasn't necessary. Sturmpires go down to flames it looked like. Oh, that's a nasty T-34 hit. Guess the squad might because of it. Bit of a lucky break. Tries to come back in with the P-4. The anti-tank Overwatch still active. T-34 trying to make a move here, but... That Panzer is unconcerned. Not just a satchel. Cap 75 points left for the allies. Going for the middle. Two should have zoned the bottom. We will run the SU 85. Very tough playing SU 85s against your know, Vet 2. 
Yak Panthers. The health bonus they get is just so good, and they're all really pretty good in the hit to hit. Hit zero versus hit zero. Stuka. I'm not as successful there. Okay. I, I looked away from this because I thought he would back away, but did not fall on Kirov's side. Coming in with a smoke out on the machine gun as well. Nice idea. All of the VPs are being exchanged right now. It's looking to come out on top though. We're getting right there. Good positioning. Some huge hits. Oh, what is Kirov doing? Abandoned. He's gonna try to stick around for the kill, and he does. Really sloppy play. We are, you know, 40 minutes into this game now. Kirov, I think, donating two tanks back to back there. Unnecessary losses. Let's set the allies way behind now. Almost got another P4 about to pop out. Tank Overwatch Reefer Dark Reef. He's got enough for two activations of it still. On the bottom. Oh, goes after the machine gun. I think this is another creeping barrage. Doesn't quite get the D crew though. That's a pretty good hits nonetheless. Oh, gets the Jaeger lights. Don't think I'm bounced. Realized he was getting fired at by the uh, creeping barrage. So we ran right into that. Real war for these VPs. The Axis though, they don't need to overplay their hand. They've got 190 remaining. Plenty of time for them. It's the Allies who need to be desperate. Was that friendly fire? Yeah, wow, that was nasty. He's lucky to survive because of that. Cost him a whole squad with the Jaeger lights there. Big pins are coming in. About saving up for the loiter again. It does buy you, you know, a moment of safety, but I do wonder if we just spam mines where things will be. Kirov does his two sweepers now. Let's try and dodge the Kachusha fire. Looks like they avoided most of it. Oh boy, Jager Lights did in the bottom. Big move from Kirov. You go AFK or something? Did he suffer a big lag spike? What happened there? Just donates the Raketan as well. Maybe fatigue setting in for both teams. Oh, he leaves the capture circle too early. Didn't get the cap off either. Now the Raketan, a pretty good option to help zone these Jagdpanzers. Goes for another Jaeger Light, so no more snares for unbalanced, which is tough. If you're up against swarming T-34s with Antitank Overwatch, you probably want a Faust or two. Gets the cap off though in the middle. Oh, did Nima cancel the second P4? I think he did. Maybe stalling for the King Tiger. I do worry that the King Tiger is just going to be Antitank Overwatch Magnet and two activations of it ready to go here. Oh, 
P34 with some pathfinding hiccups. It's passed off quickly with P4. Oh, lost vision, maybe. No engine damage on it, though. Should be alright. Gets the decor on the Zis after that as well. Let's kill off the repair unit. Oh, cost himself a squad. T-34 coming in for some assistance, but the P4 is already long gone. Man, I thought he was just going to go charging in there. The Gachusha was right there for the tanking, but... Made it safe. Didn't lose his P4, so it's fine. Somehow he's not in the circle there. Strange, looked like he was. Yeah, you guys will do very well in this cover-to-cover -cover style matchup. There is that King Tiger. He's got a P4, two Rakittens to uh, back it up. But... Oh. Still got one anti tank Overwatch activation ready to go. Oh, T34 comes in for a nasty shot. Jagerlite's in trouble. Two Jagpanzers here, though. He might lose this. Has it chase me with this one? Misses a shot anyway. I think that was a uh, kill on offer there, but didn't quite manage the maneuver. If for the Axis, they have been all oh, struggling, especially if they are uh, losing squads like that. Not much unbalance could do there. Maybe he could have delayed his retreat like one and a half seconds longer. Oh, P4 is making some plays. Going after the T34, but there's another one there on his rear armor. And G's decrewed. Oh, P4 goes down. Well, the Rakitans, though, from the side. Get one in return. Now I'm getting out of there. Planes brought in by unbalance. Tank. Oh, the Jagpens are securing the kill. I think the planes would have got the kill anyway. On top of that, double Jagpens is pushing in here. They're feeling bold. They're going after Kirov's tanks. Shot down planes like crazy though. And tank Overwatch is zoning. The Yak Panzers from staying in there. KT's backed out for repairs. Getting into the middle, but working on the edges, Nima, working nicely. Oh, gave up on it though. Just going for the top. The tiger's healthy though. Might be able to get the decap off. Seven points left for the allies. Big formation of troops from balance down the bottom. Kirov's going to use Kachusha for that, I imagine. But he does force some way. The walking Stuka. Oh, there goes the Rakitten. He's in for the Ram. Oh, and it's an engine damage as well. Really fortunate for Dark Region. Drops in tank overwatch this King Tiger. It looks like it's gonna to be toast. That's what you 
rearing in from the side. T-34 doing some crazy drive-by action. Somehow survives the King Tiger, not so lucky. Hands are right on the edge of the zone here, getting hammered as well. King Tiger just not quite fast enough there that T-34 was running out of steam. Tied a bit further and he would have been uh, surviving. Ram would have run out of go juice. Yeah, that's why it's tough to go for a uh, King Tiger if you're up against double end tank overwatches. Feels like that's basically inevitable. Yeah, Panzer though finds the T-34. He's not trying to dodge at all, Kirov. He thought he was safe. But the Ape Panzer chased him. If he just backed away behind this tree line, probably could have escaped. And there we go, a nasty heavy mortar shot. Knocks out the penals. And balance kind of getting one back there. He suffered a lot of oops, squall wipes in similar situations. Gets one back. And triple Jaeger lights just making mince me out of those pins. They try to hold on on the point. Find some time for the Gachusha to start firing. Staying right on the edge though. Gets the decap off at least. 8 points left for the Allies, 78 for the Axis. And that's going to come in from the side. Yagpens is a little bit off. Getting a shot now. T-34 is going to maybe go in. Kirov's also got the intent go watch. He rams. He penetrates. Yagpens is maybe going to chase past the circle here though. Could do. Stuka forces that away out the back. T-34 looking for uh, some major damage. Walking Stuka could even be in the uh, firing line here. The tank Overwatch mainly going after this one. Oh, and he hasn't dodged with the walking Stuka. There it goes now. He's very late. Yeah, that was very avoidable on the walking Stuka. I thought he was just going to drive over to this side and start blasting from uh, this, but he tried to back all the way through the other end. T-34 dead up here, meanwhile. 223 brought into action, gets some decrews going. Gets some squad wipes, maybe. And holding on strong with the uh, Panzer IV up the top here. Mazia is 2 2 3. My vehicle destroyed. Axis are on the cap though, and that's going to be the GG. Poof. Close game, close game. I th think the lead kind of changed hands a few times throughout the match, which always makes for an entertaining replay. But yeah. Nexus end up coming out on top. Some daring dives from Nima. I think quite a few of them went well. I don't think any of them went like horribly, horribly wrong, which is often like GG when they do. But yeah, Blitzing and Panzer IV got some uh, nice kills. Generally, you know, might have traded like a Panzer IV for a T-34 here and there, which is a bad trade, but not horrible at least, you know? So it was all good. I'm not sure, yeah, I don't know about the King Tiger when you're up against double anti tank over, which doesn't seem like a good idea. It's just too easy to kill with the Ram plus anti tank overwatch combo. Double Yag Panzers, though, they seem to do pretty well. Got a lot of kills and unbalanced, pushing them right the way in. With some, like, kills quite far up, Kira wasn't expecting. Didn't back his tanks away far enough. Kira did seem to struggle against... The uh, Jagdpanzers trying to build SU-85s, which, uh, you know, you can trade head-to-head -to -head early on, but once you're out vetted, it's just such a struggle, especially if you're in a two-on-one situation, kind of infantry-based anti-tank, or, you know, swarming uh, T-34s plus anti-tank Overwatch, also a good combo. Head-to-head -to -head is tough.
And this map, I think, does have enough room that you can pull those flanking maneuvers off with the T-34s. But yeah, a good job there by the Axis hanging tough. Coming out on top in the end. End up taking it. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like what game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.